What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out why The Rock not in WWE. Freak out at Survivor Series 2021. Uh, the Hit Row incident. All this and more from Wrestle Talk, man. This will be my first time checking out a Wrestle Talk video on this page. If y'all want me to check out more, let me know down below. I've been subscribed to them for like over a year now. Uh, I like their content, so definitely go subscribe to them if you haven't already. You can check out some good informative information about all of wrestling not just wwe all of wrestling so definitely go check them out man so let's get right into this video appreciate all the love support let's do it in this wrestle talk news Ooh. wwe freak out backstage why the rock didn't show up at survivor series a hit row incident and of course where is the egg not the who egg. is the egg why is the egg. Subscribe and enable Not notifications to always oh on God. for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk. Last night's Survivor Series pay-per-view was built around being 25 years since Rock the Dwayne Johnson made his WWE debut, showing multiple video packages on his career, dedicating a 25-man battle royal to him based around Pizza Hut, that's what he would have wanted, and being sponsored by his new film Red Notice on Netflix. You might as well call it Peacock Premium right now, the way they're just watching WWE shag other streaming services on their own platform. But The Rock's WWE return, likely to set up a WrestleMania feud with his real life who so Roman Reigns was just an ingenious red herring because what WWE gave us instead was the debut of if you smell what the egg is cooking could be a lot of things it's a very versatile ingredient you see Rock's new film Red Notice is all about him Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot going around the world to steal three ludicrously expensive Fabergé eggs Fabergé egg title of your next NXT 2.0 gimmick. <laughs> so as part of Nick Khan's grand brand integration vision, this MacGuffin was ingeniously turned into an at least two night long storyline featuring the return of Vince McMahon and the entire WWE roster being booked for tonight's episode of Raw. Hey, I thought Survivor Series was the one night a year when Raw and SmackDown superstars went head to head in direct- <laughs> Oh my god! See, I talked about this in my thoughts and opinions video. I, I, what's the point, bro? So people can watch Raw to figure out what the fuck happened to the egg. Bro, I. But I'm sorry, Egg. I won't question your wisdom again. Vince claimed Rock gave him the egg as a gift. Explicitly said it's the real thing and not a movie prop, and is therefore worth a hundred million dollars. You know. Almost a third of Dwayne's net worth, and almost definitely not a rib Johnson would kayfabe play on Vince. Just four days out from WWE releasing their latest batch of wrestlers due to budget cuts. Mm. But then, the egg was stolen. Oh no. So Vince told Adam Pearce to get the entire WWE roster on tonight's episode of Raw so they can question who stole it. Which Pearce tweeted like a madman. If you need me, I'm currently searching for a golden egg. Eyes looking emoji, magnifying glass emoji, egg emoji. I hope whoever stole this damn egg comes to realize that being a thief is not all it's cracked up to be. Because cracked is something that typically happens to X and my brain when WWE tries to do stuff like this. The fans were happy and definitely didn't awkwardly stand around after the main event expecting The Rock to show up. I mean, The, the Rock does kind of look like an egg sometimes. Because the truth was, despite WWE building the whole show around him... And the this is why I also said this in my thoughts and opinion video as well. They built up the show around him. That's the problem. They shouldn't have done that. If he wasn't going to be there, don't build up the show around him. That's the problem. Oh, my God, dog. You can honor someone and not have them on the show. Just don't build them up like they're going to be on the show. An egg, Dwayne could never attend. Dave Meltzer has reported Johnson is currently filming a movie in Australia and he can't go back and forth because of quarantine. There was no way he could be at the show tonight. In WWE's defense, they never actually advertised Rock for the show. I get but that. do you think them building Survivor Series around his 25th anniversary without him was misleading? Let me know in the comments down below. Yes, that's the problem. I get it. If there's no point, you can acknowledge it. I'm okay with you acknowledging it. But you set up people's expectations to be higher than what's really about to happen. 
I know a lot of people say he's filming the movie. There's no way he could be there. All right, cool. Well, don't build up the entire show around him. Don't have Roman hit the rock bottom. Don't bring in his ridiculous egg to sit up here and create a storyline with. He's not even going to be able to be there probably on Monday Night Raw. What's the point? What is the point? What is the point? What is the point? It's misleading. They didn't say he was going to be there. Obviously, they were no. They would like to be that as a surprise. I get it. That would be a big draw if they was like, oh, The Rock's going to be here. Everyone's going to show in, tune in to see that. But at the same time, man, there's other ways they could have just, you can acknowledge, oh, this, this is the 25th anniversary of The Rock. Boom, 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 boom. Getting in, you know, coming into WWE. But just don't, don't continuously talk about it throughout the show because that's all people cared about. So WWE did this to themselves by creating unreal expectations by semi promoting The Rock and all this other stuff. And ultimately, people just be like, oh, well, you know what I'm saying? They keep talking about it. All right, cool. You got Casuals, a.k.a. Dub, no disrespect. He doesn't really watch the product like that. He's thinking The Rock going to be here too because they've been promoting it. He's, he's watching it. Oh, shit, The Rock probably going to be here. And then he's like, ah, oh, see, this is why I don't watch much of wrestling anymore. Like, he was just disappointed, man. Below, I'll tell you who reportedly did have concerns. WWE's own backstage officials. Thanks for your support on Patreon. The Mayor of Painsville, Dan. Go over to patreon.com forward slash wrestle talk now to get your own Patreon That's shout outs. Bro. According to Fightful, the match order for Survivor Series had been set well ahead of time, a rarity for WWE's usual last minute changes approach, and was locked in on Thursday. But because some of the run sheets have been printed in reverse, some backstage thought Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch, which ended up being the show's opener, was the main event. They assumed it had been moved because The Rock wouldn't be present, and presumably building the show around him and having his cousin in the main event who's heavily speculated to have a WrestleMania match with him might set a certain expectation if Roman Reigns closed the show. When some members of the team found out The Rock was not going to be present, we're told they voiced their concern about the Reigns match closing the pay-per-view, mm. but there wasn't a major push to change it. Mm. But that wasn't the only WWE freakout backstage. WWE freakout, <laughs> title of your mid-noughties wrestling pay-per-view. Because PW Insider writes people began to panic backstage when they thought the show was in danger of going too long. Apparently, Survivor Series had to be off the air at 11.35 p.m. Eastern, and there was a minor freak out before the main event started, which only got going with half an hour left. A Roman yeah. needs at least half that time to make his entrance. Mm -hmm. At that point, people backstage were asking why so much time had been given to the men's elimination match entrances, which took almost 15 minutes. Yeah. And another annoyance was more out of their control, the fans chanting for AEW stuff. Mm -hmm. With Survivor Series taking place in Brooklyn, the crowd was a bit smarter and more boisterous than usual, with the yep. kickoff show in particular getting trolled. PW Insider reported there were loud Adam Cole chants before the show, with loud in capitals, baby. Elsewhere on the pay-per-view, Kayla Braxton informed Paul Heyman that Brock Lesnar is no longer indefinitely suspended. So... He's definitely suspended? <laughs> he's got a return date? Or he's not suspended at all and he can come back whenever? I defer to you and your boundless wisdom, <laughs> the egg. Damien Priest was said to have turned heel on the pre-show, yeah. attacking Rick Boogs and losing via DQ when he hit Shinsuke Nakamura with the electric guitar. Although this could just be half a turn, as Priest currently has a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde gimmick. You know, because his name is both Damien and Priest, it's smart stuff here. And Becky cut an incredibly emotional backstage promo after beating Charlotte Flair in the opener, breaking down into tears where she said, to see where we came from, to see where we are now, and the hatred, it's so sad. That's somebody I loved so much, who I trusted with my life. We've been through everything together. We nearly died in a car crash together. Mm. Becky is a hell of a promo, and maybe that's all a good old fashioned work. Mm. Or she's gone method and is using real feelings there to fuel those tears. i am be honest with you. I, whether it's a work or not, she's killing it. And I, I do believe there is some real backstage tension between them two. There is. And that's why that match worked even more. Because there's some real life tension between those two. But you know what? Qu credit to WWE. 
Even when you think you've seen it all, there's nothing they can do to surprise us anymore. They debut their egg at one of their biggest shows of the year and release one of their top prospects on Thursday night, just a month after their main roster debut, Hit Row. If you thought Top Dollar was vocal inside the company, looks like he's going to be even more outspoken now he's been cut. Dave Meltzer first reported mm. Top Dollar got a lot of backstage heat because he rubbed a ton of people the wrong way in NXT and was getting the same reputation on the main roster. And because Vince McMahon saw him as the star of the group, if they were going to get rid of him, might as well fire the whole faction. But now Top Dollar has spoken about that heat going both ways backstage in an interview with Busted Open Radio. Apparently, he politely asked production to turn down the music in the arena while rehearsing their Sami Zayn segment for SmackDown, so they could better hear what reactions they were getting. I don't know what was said, but something was said about me over the headset that was so disrespectful. The three different producers who heard it on the headset came up to me and apologised to me afterwards, yeah. even though I didn't even hear what was said. Clearly something was said that was very wild and disrespectful because they felt the need to apologise to me for some I didn't Damn. even know. On top of that, he claimed he also had heat following BFAB's release. They got mad that when Brianna got released, I called up to the office and said, I don't understand why you would release Brianna. We were a foursome group. You take Brianna out of the group, and yeah, we're still cool, and yeah, we can still do all the same things, but we're just every three man wrestling group. The remaining Hit Row members then redid their song without her in it, which he claims also annoyed WWE officials. But there is life after WWE like former NXT North American champion Bronson Reed, who was released in August, who made his Impact Wrestling debut at oh, Saturday's okay. Turning Point show under his new name Jonah, attacking former world champion Josh Alexander. PW Insider is reporting Jonah is set to get a big push in the company. He also debuted for New Japan the previous weekend. And finally, F4W Online is reporting Kenny Omega is expected to vacate his AAA Mega Heavyweight Championship due to his upcoming surgery. Omega lost yeah. his AE world title to Hangman Page at last week's Full Gear pay-per-view and is now expected to take time off to recover from numerous injuries and conditions like vertigo, with no confirmed date for his yeah. return. Now go check out Laurie's full review of Survivor Series and the egg. So I think the problem with a show like Survivor Series is always one of stakes. Why does anyone... Hey man, I enjoyed this video. Uh, um, it's, it's just one of those things where I... Uh, WWE man yeah. uh, don't promote something don't sit up there not promote but don't sit up there and insinuate someone's coming back when you know they're not coming back there's no point in adding these extra rock segments in and all this it's just too much teasing for no payoff like that's what really killed it honestly a lot of people were expecting something because of how WWE booked it. I don't give a fuck about them finding a goddamn egg. I don't care. If it doesn't ultimately lead to something creative to the point where it's going to create some type of major feud, which I doubt it. I don't. Who cares, bro? I don't care. Comment down below. Let me know. If you want me to check out some more Wrestle Talk content, I definitely will if you guys do. Appreciate all the love and support. Road to 70K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.